Hey! In this video, we'll build a full featured drag and drop system with inventory like greed, multiple items, and object snapping. Let's go! As you can see, we already have a place for our items right here. In hierarchy, I will right click and select UI image to create a new shape that we'll be able to use as our grid. Let's make it a bit bigger and reduce its transparency. We'll call it a grid. Now let's create an inventory slot. Right click on the grid and select once more UI image. I'll call it inventory slot, resize it to 240 by 240 and change the picture to make it look a bit better. Because we'll be using this game object multiple times in our project, it is a good idea to create a prefab out of it. Simply drag it from the hierarchy into the prefabs folder in assets. That way, we'll be able to create multiple instances of it that will share the same properties. But as you can see, we already have an issue with spacing those slots. If you watched my grid tutorial, you know what to do. Click on the grid parent and add a new component called grid layout group. Change cell size to 240 by 240 and set spacing to 32 by 32. Of course, you can modify those values however you'd like. Now, each time I add a new grid object, it will be automatically spaced in the nice grid. Reminder that in this video, we'll only create a drag and drop logic. If you're interested in the full inventory creation tutorial, be sure to subscribe to not miss out. Now, time to create draggable items. Right click on any of the inventory slots and select UI image to create a new object inside of it. I will call it item. Let's set its graphic and change dimensions to 180 by 180. Great. Time to create a new script. Click Add Component and type Draggable Item. Press Return, wait a few seconds and open newly created script. So Unity has a great built-in event system that allows you to implement mouse dragging very easily. Let's import it. Here at the top, type using UnityEngine.EventSystems. What event systems allow us to do is to implement a very interesting interfaces related to player actions. For example, if I would now type a comma after mono behavior and start typing I pointer, you can see I pointer click or I pointer move. That would allow us to trigger custom methods when a player clicks on an object or moves the mouse over it. In our case, we'll be using three interfaces related to dragging objects. I begin drag handler, I drag handler, and I end drag handler. Now right click on each one of those separately and select implement interface in quick actions. Exactly the same way as you know start and update methods are being used by Unity to perform custom logic, the same way those three methods will be triggered when the player starts the drag, when the player is dragging, and finally when the player releases the mouse. To test it out, let's replace those throw exceptions with debug.log, begin drag, dragging, and end drag. After those changes, save the script. Now you can see that when I start dragging the object, there is a console log begin drag, during mouse movement there is dragging, and when I release the mouse button, we have an end drag message. Let's turn those messages into some powerful logic. The first step will be to move our item with the mouse while dragging. To do that, in onDrag method, type transform.position equals input.mouse position. After that change, the item position will be copied from the current mouse position while dragging. Already looks great. But now we have an issue. Notice that when I start to drag our item below other slots, it gets lost under it. That is because in UTUI hierarchy, objects placed last are at the very top of the scene, so having the first slot as a parent 
places our item below almost everything. A solution to this problem will be to unlink the item from the slot while dragging and place it at the very bottom of the hierarchy. That way it will always be on the top of every other object in the scene. To do that, go back to our draggable item script and firstly let's define a new variable. Transform parent after drag. We'll use this variable to save what was the original parent of the object and then assign the parent once more after the finished drag. In onBeginDrag type parent after drag equals transform that parent and in onEndDrag type transform that set parent parent after drag. Finally, also in the onBeginDrag we need to set canvas as the parent of our object during the drag. So transform that set parent and pass in transform that root which points to the canvas wherever we are in the hierarchy transform that set as last sibling to place it at the very top of our view let's save the script and test out our game now you can see that during the drag process the item object is placed above everything on the screen the only issue we are having right now is that when I release the item, it doesn't go back to the original place in the slot. That's actually pretty easy to fix. Notice that currently item is not really tied to the center of the inventory slot and we can freely move it in the editor. To avoid that, we can add to the inventory slot another grid component group. That way, we'll create a one item grid inside every inventory slot. Change its cell size to 180 by 180, the same as the item object, and change child alignment to middle center. That way, item object will always be in the middle. Before we'll test it out, remember to update our prefab, so that this grid layout group will be added to every other inventory slot. Here at the top, click Overrides and apply Grid Layout Group. Now every inventory slot has this grid. Press play and look at that perfect snapping action after mouse release. If you got lost at any point, you can support me on Patreon and get source files for all of my Unity tutorials. Link in the description. Now time for the part you all been waiting for dragging items between slots. Actually, that will be a matter of only a few lines of code. On our inventory slot, let's create a new script called simply inventory slot. Open it. Just as we did with items, let's use unityengine.eventsystems and this time implement iDropHandler interface. As the name suggests, this method will be triggered when something will be dropped on this object. To get that dropped object, in our case an item, let's type game object dropped equals event data dot pointer drag. Now what we can do is to modify parent after drag variable of the draggable item. That way, here in the on and drag method, item will be assigned to the new parent. Firstly, we need to make this variable public and also to avoid displaying it in the Unity editor, we can add hide in inspector attribute. Now back to the inventory slot, let's get the draggable item script from the dropped game object. Type draggable item called draggable item equals dropped dot get component draggable item and finally draggable item that parent after drag equals transform. Perfect. Let's save everything. Make sure to apply added script to the prefab and play the game. I will now click on our item, move it above the other inventory slot and nothing. It snaps right back. But why is it like that? That's because when the mouse pointer is released, game checks what is directly under the mouse. It turns out that under the mouse we have our item. We can't drop item into the item, so the game just reverts back to the original parent. 
The solution to this is to hide this object from any of the mouse inputs during the drag process, so that when the mouse pointer will be released, it will ignore the item and will do all the checks with the inventory slot as intended. You may have noticed that many of the UI elements have this Rycast target checkbox. When it is checked, we can interact with the object. But when it's disabled, for the mouse, this object basically does not exist. Let's use it in our script. At the top of the draggable item script, I will create a new variable. Public image image. To make that work, we'll also need to use unityengine.ui. And then here in the onBeginDrag, let's type image.raycastTarget equals false. And in on and drag, image that raycast target equals true, so that interaction with the item will be again possible after it will be placed in the slot. Save, go back to Unity, assign image to the script, and press play. Now, finally, our drag and drop works perfectly between multiple slots. Now, at the very end, let's create a prefab out of our item and duplicate it into a few different slots. Perfect, now I have this beautiful inventory screen with multiple items. When I press play, you can see how all of them work with each other and I can drag items between multiple slots. But there is one thing that we haven't predicted. What would happen if I would drag two items into the same slot? Any ideas? Let's test it out. Because there is a grid inside each inventory slot, those items simply got stacked one under the other. Fortunately, we can pretty easily fix that. In inventory slot script, let's create a new if statement that will check if there are any children in this slot. Type if transform.childCount double equals zero. And then execute all the logic we created before. Now when we start our game, you can see that adding two items into the same slot is no longer possible. If you'd like to continue your Unity adventure, be sure to check these other tutorials. As always, thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. See you soon!